do you know what day tomorrow is? Other than the 3rd of March, it is the Japanese festival Hina Matsuri, also known as Girls' Day and Dolls' Day. Now in this video I'm going to give you a little bit of history about the festival, I'm going to tell you how people celebrate it today, I'm going to tell you what kinds of food they eat, and most importantly I'm going to tell you how you can celebrate it. I've written an article that goes more in depth into this subject, so if you want to read that, if you're on YouTube, it's in the comment box below. If you're already on my website, it's to the left of this video. The History Now, the exact origins of Hina Matsuri are not known, but it can be traced back to the ancient Chinese practice of putting dolls in one's house in order to absorb evil spirits. It is also connected to the Japanese holidays that are celebrated on the 1st of the 1st month, the 3rd of the 3rd month, and the 5th of the 5th month. The one that takes place on the 3rd of the 3rd month has had many different names and has held different kinds of significance over the years. It can be connected back to a peach festival that used to be celebrated, but the first instance we can see of dolls being incorporated into the festival is when Empress Meisho was a princess, she had dolls commissioned for her that she could play with, and when she became empress, the name of the festival was officially changed to Hina Matsuri. But the ideas of marriage and family that are celebrated in the festival today would not be incorporated until the Meiji period, which was much later. Which brings us on to present day celebrations. Now, if you are in Japan right now or have been to Japan during this time, you will find doll displays in shops and supermarkets all over the place. These dolls are also placed in people's houses and they're set up around a week before the 3rd of March but they must be taken down before the 3rd of March ends because if you leave them up after that it is bad luck and your daughter may get married late. Now I'm going to take you through the setup of this display. On top we have the Emperor and Empress dolls. On the second tier we have three court ladies. On the third tier we have five male musicians. On the fourth tier, we have two ministers. And on the fifth tier, we have three helpers. The sixth tier is for items that are used inside the palace. And the seventh tier is for items used out with the palace. Now that is basically the full set, you know, without mentioning all the different little accessories that you need for every single tier. But many people will just have the Emperor and Empress doll because they are the most important ones and also these doll sets are incredibly expensive. That is why upon the birth of a baby girl in Japan, relatives will usually gift her with a set of these dolls before her first Hina Matsuri. Or she will maybe even be lucky to be given dolls that have been passed down from generation to generation. Now celebrations of the festival are mostly surrounding house parties. Parents of daughters will set up a party for their child, the child will invite their school friends, they'll maybe dress up, they'll maybe play games. But aside from the dolls, the most significant part of this festival is the food. Now there are many different foods that are eaten on Hina Masuri, but I will go through the most popular ones. First we have Chirashi Sushi. This is a rice dish that has been flavoured with vinegar and sugar and topped with sashimi, maybe moulded into little flowers or something equally as decorative. Next we have Ushio Jiru. This is a very simple clam soup. You can flavour it with things like soy sauce or lemon zest, but it is a basic seafood broth. And considering the delicious seafood Japan tends to have, it is absolutely scrumptious. Now, those are the two most popular savoury dishes, but this is a festival that's all about the sweets. Now, the first one I want to talk about is Hina Arare, because they remind me of a sweet that I used to have in Scotland called Rainbow Drops. They're like little sweet Rice Krispie snacks. Now, I tried to find them so I could show you them for this video, but they must have been discontinued since I was a child because I could not for the life of me find them anywhere. So the most I can tell you is they taste like a sweet Rice Krispie. The next and probably most important sweet that we have is Hishi Mochi. This is a diamond shaped mochi treat that has three different layers. The first layer is pink, flavoured with jasmine and represents health. The second layer is white, is flavoured with water chestnuts and represents purity. And the last layer is green, flavoured with mugwort and represents good luck. Next we have dango. Now this is very, very easy to find. It is not just eaten at this time of year. You will find it in supermarkets year round. 
It is a treat made with rice flour and it's kind of like mochi but not really. All I can say is if you like mochi you'll probably like dango. Next we have another thing that you can find year round which is daifuku. This is strawberries dipped in red bean paste and covered in mochi. And lastly if you want to get into the spirit of spring you can try sakura flavoured mochi. Oh god I so miss Japanese food just talking about this is making me so hungry. Now we're on to the most important topic, what you can do to celebrate the festival. Now this one is a little bit tricky because Hina Matsuri is mostly a family holiday. If you have Japanese friends with children, maybe you'll get invited to a house party, but it is unlikely. But never fear, I have come up with six ways that you can spend the day and get into the traditional spirit. Number one, go see a public doll display. Now, most local museums will have their own Hinamatsuri display. Now, these sets will be historical artifacts, so you will probably see far more elaborate and gorgeous displays than you could probably see in an average Japanese household. I lived in Nagoya, so I recommend the Tokugawa Art Museum, but most likely your local museum will have a display that you can go and see. Number two, go to a doll floating ceremony. Now remember I talked about the ancient Chinese practice of making straw dolls in order to absorb evil spirits? Well part of that practice is taking those dolls and floating them downstream to send the evil spirits away. This is something that is still practiced today in Japan. It won't be as common as Hina displays, but there are famous floating ceremonies in Tokyo and Wakayama, so a quick Google search will tell you whether or not you will be able to find this kind of ceremony in your area. Number three crafts. Now if you can rope some friends into this, this could be fun. You could go to a local crafting event, for example wood carving, and you could maybe ask the teacher how to carve yourself your own Hina doll. Or if there's a sushi class, you could maybe see if you could learn how to make chirashi sushi. Or if you yourself are crafty, you could put your energy into making your own little straw dolls and send them downstream. Number four dress up in a yukata. Now a yukata is a summer kimono, it's much lighter, it's much less formal and it's much easier to put on, so you can have lots of fun with this. Peaches are a big part of this festival so you can find a peach blossom tree, go there, take some pictures for Instagram, maybe take a picnic with you, buy some dango, just relax and have fun with it. Number five, go to a shrine. Now it's not traditional, to visit shrines on girls day but if you happen to find yourself alone and want a quieter thing to do then you can find a shrine located in a park, go there, have a walk around and pray for the health and happiness of a girl or girls in your life. And number six, try the traditional food or more tricky, try make the traditional food. Now like I said, a lot of these treats can be found at the supermarket, but if you fancy making one yourself, I recommend the clam broth. Because it really is the easiest one of the lot. You can just prepare the clams, boil them, skim off some of the scum on top, add some soy sauce or some lemon zest to flavour it however you want, and there you have a very nice, easy, seasonal Japanese dish. Okay, that's it. Now, I really hope my tips have been helpful because, like I said, this is a family holiday, so it may be tricky for you to celebrate it in the traditional way, but that doesn't mean that you can't soak up the atmosphere, have fun, and as long as you enjoy yourself, that is all that is important. Now, once again, there is a full, more in-depth article accompanying this video. If you're on YouTube, it's below. If you're on my website, it's to the left of this video. Please like and subscribe, feel free to ask as many questions as you want and I will see you in the next video. Bye!